It's complicated. Hi, my name is Big, and I have a book out at DF A normal day consists of getting in the office quite early, checking through my emails, dealing with stuff that needs to be done, and putting budgets together for gigs that are coming up, contacting agents, listening to radio shows that have been on the night before, going through blogs, finding out what gigs are on that night in town, see if there's anything I can go to, and just trying to find the best cool new bands. There's two ways I go about getting the bands. Bands come to me and I approach bands. Touring wise, I've heard them on the Zane show or noticed them supporting someone or something like that. Also, tips, it's really good for me to trust my network, so I know a lot of AR scouts that give me tips and who's a cool new bands coming up. Things I look for in live bands are lots of things like stage presence, songs. Songs are a very, very key part of being in a band. A lot of bands forget about songs. How crowd reaction, whether it is just a mate or if it is a following they're starting to build up uh, and then I also look at what gigs are doing if they play Glasgow a bit too much or if they do tour the, the rest of Scotland and the UK who's supported, how they put shows, how active they are on social media things like that. Some tips I would give bands who are doing gigs at this kind of level is meet the sound guy and remember his name he's the man who controls how good you sound so I'd always say Hey Chris, can I have this up in the monitor please Chris? Can I have this out front please Chris? Things like that. Always, always have flyers on you. Always fly in a crowd, whether it is just your mates or whatever. Just with your Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud link on it, just so it's something that sticks in their brain about you. The La Fontaine's done that really well when they support Twitter Atlantic, because a lot of bands go and support bigger bands and don't do it very well. Whereas the La Fontaine smashed it, they had flyers out, they rock the crowd, and then they look at the fan base they've got out off the back of those Twin Atlantic shows, I think. A really good part of my job as well is I get to see bands progress. So there's a few bands I've worked with for years, like Beagle Thieves, La Fontaine's, Father's Son, even Touring Acts at the Temperance Movement. I've worked with them from King Tut's Sleazy's level sometimes, I even I promoted the Beagle Thieves and Maggie Mays before even watching the Ed concerts. Built that relationship up over years, and managed to get to BBC level with some acts, QMU level and stuff, so it's really good to see bands make that progression. But me as my career uh, builds, I suppose it's good to watch bands go in that same kind of trajectory. My favourite thing about King Tuts is working with the touring bands that come through and come off stage and say, oh my god, that crowd in Glasgow are the best ever. Because I went to a lot of gigs when I was drunk and I heard a lot of bands say that and I kind of thought, yeah right, of course we are. But genuinely hear bands coming off stage and say Glasgow is the best crowd in the world, which is amazing. I'm a total fanboy for Scottish music. My, my most played artists on my iTunes are Biffy Clyro, Churches, Frabbit, S Type, and a guy called Kev Harper, who uh, is a singer songwriter that I love. He's been in a few bands, but yeah, his stuff is incredible. If you want to contact me about a gig, all the details are on the King Tut's website, or on the section How to Play King Tut's. Uh, please don't send any MP3s, but send me SoundCloud links and a little bit about the band, and hopefully I'll get back to you.